Bruchim Aboyim. Thank you all for coming. We are in the time of the year, uh, in the month of El, and uh, basically we're two weeks away from Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And um, I thought what we might start doing in the next lectures, uh, deal with prayer, because it's so germane to the time. Also, prayer is the most basic connection to our Creator. Um, we pray to God basically for everything, in every aspect of our lives. Pray to God for health and for wealth, for children, for marriage. Uh, we pray for God for food. Uh, really, prayer goes from the bedroom through the bathroom. Uh, we thank God and ask God for help in every aspect of our life. So, what's the origin of prayer? When did it begin? And the truth is, the first day of creation, first man, when man was created, Adam, that the um, Torah tells us that even though all of, all of plant life was created by God, God created man and said he was created to shamar, to guard the garden, and that things did not sprout until he prayed for rain. Even today, we pray for rain. It's part of the prayers that we have for rain and for dew that is uh, important as oil is. Truth of the matter is water is far greater and in a, g a much greater commodity for, for the world. And without that, even our bodies, 85% of our bodies is water. Everything basically goes back to that. So this was Shomer, that when the Torah ta uses the word to guard, again, that Adam prayed and then everything sprouted. Also, we know that Adam, when he was created, sacrificed to God. And we know that sacrifices, again, are a form of avoda, service to God. And not only that, we know that on the first hours of creation, that first man, Adam, sinned. And that when he sinned, he, was, he prayed to God, and then God forgave him. So, the idea of prayer. It's interesting, the Gemara Tainus says that it's actually a positive commandment to pray to God. In the center of Akib, based on the words of the second paragraph of the Shema that we say every day, says the Avos Hashem Lokechem, to love the Lord your God, Ula Avdo and to serve him, Bakal Lavavachem with all your heart. And what is all your heart? So the Rambam says that the tefillah is avodas halev, the service of the heart. And this is what prayer is all about. Um, and then it continues in the prayer, it says, and I will give rain in, to, in the field for, your, for, for you to plant with and for your animals. Now, it's interesting that, again, we see that animals are sustained, are provided by God with no effort. Again, that we pray but God in reality takes care of everything. But our connection to God is a vodas alev, this, this connection of the heart. There was a, uh, a story told of a man who was uh, lost in the forest. And as the sun was setting, he sat down by a tree and he lifted his eyes up to heaven. And he said, dear God, not only am I a stupid man for getting lost, the sun's about to set and I haven't prayed the evening, afternoon prayer and the time is running out, but I don't know it by memory. So what I will do is I'm going to say the olive base, the alphabet, over and over and over and over again. And in your divine mercy, please take all of those letters and form words and let that be my afternoon prayer for today. And it was said of this man's prayers that that day his prayers were the greatest that reached God in heaven because it has to do with the connection of the heart uh, people are very concerned when they're in a synagogue of what page are they on that's the least important of all things the idea is to make that connection now the Shema that I mentioned before hear O Israel the Lord is our God the Lord is one is the only prayer that is Torahic in fact, the Mishnah, the oral tradition, begins with the question of when does a person say the evening Shema? 
which is also the first commandment that a bar mitzvah boy, a young boy of 13, has of saying the Shema on that evening when he becomes a man. And the only Torahic blessing that we make is the grace after meals, thanking God for all that he gives us and be, being grateful. Again, we're called Yehudim. Uh, Jews, for the fact of Yehudim, means to thank, thank God. They were named after Judah, who his mother Leah, when he was born, fourth son, which was over and above, which she saw as her lot, that each one would have three children. When she saw she had four, she thanked God for the extra blessing. Now, the blessing that Yaakov gave to his sons, that we know that, pardon me, Yitzchak gave to Yaakov, that Esau was given the sword, and Akol Kol Yaakov. And the blessing given to us as Jews was the, pr the, the power of prayer. But what's interesting is the word that it was used is kol. Kol is not prayer. Kol means the voice. That in reality, our connection to God is when it comes from the depths of our souls. When a child cries out, he does not have to ask a parent anything. Just that cry is what brings, makes a parent go into action. When a child cries, the parent moves. And so too with God. When the Jews were... In, his, in Egypt, slaves in Egypt, what God heard was their coal, their voice, their cry. And this becomes our connection, the depth of prayer. In fact, it says that the gates of tears are never closed. That when a person cries out to God, he will always be answered. And so the question becomes, so... Back, back in olden times, um, we had the tabernacle and the temple. Sacrifices were the service to God. And when a person sinned, if God told Abraham that when your children will sin, let them bring a sacrifice. And I will accept their prayer and forgive them. But Abraham, Vino, Abraham knew that the temples would only stand some 1,300 years of our existence. And he said to God, what are my children to do now? that there is no temple when that's destroyed. And God said, on the Psalm of Forim Sefoseinu, to let them say the prayers, bring the, bring the oxen with their lips, that by saying the words, it's as if we brought the sacrifices. And through that, we make a connection with God. So our avoda, our service, avoda salev, today is that of prayer. But the question becomes, where does, this, where does the prayers, the siddur, where does it all come from, the prayers that we say? Because the truth of the matter is, until the Second Temple era, that the siddur really didn't exist, the formal prayers that we have today. That up until that time, it was a time of great connection and love of God. But at the same time, a great connection and love of idols. So in everything that God brings into the world, for every action, there's a, an opposite and equal reaction. So everything has to be balanced. So at a time when there was great love of God, there was also great love of idols, something we have no concept of today. And the reason is because this first temple was destroyed because of this desire, this worship of idols. And the men of the great assembly prayed to God that this desire be taken out of the world. That somehow, some way, a man was able to connect to both God in a very tangible way and also to idols in a very tangible way. And even though to us it makes no sense, but if we know the story of the men of the great assembly, when they prayed to God, they fasted for three days, the Talmud tells us, and asked God to give them the key to the desire to serve idols. And God gave it to them. And that desire for idols was then taken out of the world. And the rabbis, the men of the great assembly being on a roll, decided that they would take the next greatest challenge in the world, which was the challenge for serving idols. And um, the, uh, the idols, the service of idols, um, pardon me, the, the, so the next greatest challenge was that of sex. So they decided that if, well, since they had already taken out the greatest challenge, let's work on number two. So they fasted another three days. And God gave them the keys to the desire for sex. 
and the desire for sex was taken out of the world. The problem was a chicken didn't lay an egg. And they realized that they had no choice but to put that desire back into the world. So today, we can well understand the desire for sex. It runs the world. All things in the world find their way back, all things, especially of evil, to that temptation of sex. It runs the world. So one can only imagine what the desire for idol worship was. So when the rabbis took this tangible desire that we had, so in the first temple era, we didn't need a sitter. People prayed out of their hearts. They were like a lovesick child. And praying to God was very simple. Connecting to God was very simple. But it was like a wife and a mistress. They had the God and idols. And they were torn between the two. But they still had this strong connection to God. Once the rabbis took this out of the world, they created a void where we have to find God within us. And what they did was, as spiritual doctors, when you have a, a, a pain in your foot, what a doctor will do is prescribe a pill. You don't understand necessarily how the pill works. Even if you have the ingredients on a bottle, you can barely read the English words. But whether you understand or not, if you take the pill as prescribed, your foot will feel better. And so too in a spiritual sense. The whole idea of prayer, reading out of a siddur, out of a prayer book, is whether you understand or you don't understand what the men of the great assembly did through their prophecy, through their Kabbalistic ability. They were able as spiritual doctors to infuse within the words of prayer this formula, this remedy for all the spiritual ailments that we have and to somehow, some way, connect us. Now, the better that we work on it, the more that we understand, the closer we can come on a tangible level to be able to connect to God by the effort that we put in. And this becomes very important. Again, for a person to try to understand at least the gist of what the prayers are. It's interesting that many of us um, many of us pray and we know the Hebrew words because we went to Hebrew school as children and we come back and we find as Baal Tshuva's returnees that we're very grateful we're able to read Hebrew but actually sometimes it's a negative because a person who can't read Hebrew but learns later prays in English which is permissible not 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 recommended, better you pray in Hebrew, in Hebrew, which is the language of God, so to speak, and of holiness. But if a person prays in English, at least he knows what he's saying, he or she. And when a person prays in Hebrew because they know the alphabet, many times they never understand any concept that they say. And in order to connect to God, to, to, with this avodah salev, the service of the heart, you have to have some idea to connect to God. If a person doesn't do that, then just the connection is really missing something. It's not like all the prongs are put together. There's no great, the energy is not the same. When a person has some idea of what he is saying, then it's much deeper and has more profound meaning for him. And so this is what the men of the great assembly did. They set up all of these prayers. And even though it's interesting, we all pray from the same prayer book. We all say the same words, and we say the same words day after day after day. Nothing changes. It may change for Shabbos. It may change for a holiday. But basically, every day and every holiday, we pray the same words. And everyone in a synagogue, you may have hundreds of people praying out of the same book, but no two people pray alike. Because each person prays from the depths of his own soul, from his own needs, from his own desires, from his own connection to God. And not only that, but even from day to day. We're going to run out of time here, so I'm going to say that next week we'll continue with this idea. Uh, this is an interesting t-shirt that I have that says when one prays, it's basically prayers like push. Pray until something happens. When you pray, don't ever give up. And again, we'll continue with this theme, God willing, next week. And uh, hopefully it'll help us so that when we come to the holy day of Rosh Hashanah and then the 10 days later of Yom Kippur, we'll be able to pray in a much more relevant and a much more deeper fashion. Thank you all for coming. God bless and have a good week.